located in a waterfront park known as Gardens by the Bay, is Super Tree Grove. This mechanical forest is a utopia for nature in a very urban location. Super Tree Grove was commissioned by the Singapore government with the intention of raising the quality of life for its residents by enhancing greenery and flora in the city. This man-made mechanical forest consists of 18 super trees. The trees range between 80 to 160 feet high and are connected by a walkway which allows visitors to cross between them and view the city from the treetops. With their thick trunks and network of thin, neuron-like branches, each tree acts as a vertical garden. Over 160,000 varieties of orchids, ferns, and other climbing plants have been planted in the trees. The trees also generate solar power. 11 of the trees are fitted with solar photovoltaic systems that convert sunlight into energy. This provides lighting that allows the trees to come alive at night, making this an all-day, all-season, horticultural heaven. If you're having trouble finding Mr. or Mrs. Swipe Right, it might be time to turn to matchmaking's ancient roots. Literally. Because deep in a forest in Germany stands a 600-year-old oak tree that has introduced hundreds of single people. It all began around 1890, when the forest ranger's daughter met a chocolate maker from Leipzig. The father did not approve of the relationship. They had to find a way to exchange messages, so they used a tree about 300 feet away from the forest ranger's office. A branch had broken off, forming a hole, and it was there they put their letters. Once her father learned how they were secretly communicating, he finally approved of their relationship. They married under the tree on June 2, 1891, after which the tree became known as Bridegroom's Oak. Sie hat die Aufgabe einer moder eines modernen Eheinstitutes. Der Baum hat eine eigene Postadresse. Seit 1927 heißt das äh, die Bräutigamseiche, 23701 Eutin. And people still send letters to the tree to this day. But can you truly find a life partner for the price of postage? No one knows better than Karl Heinz. My name is Karl Heinz Martens. I live in Eutin. Mindestens 30 Jahre Briefträger der Bräutigamseiche in Eutin. Im Durchschnitt so fünf, sechs Briefe pro Tag. Das war dann so im Durchschnitt, mal ganz grob gerechnet, mal so 1000 Briefe, die ich im Jahr dorthin gebracht habe. Sonst kamen die Briefe wirklich aus der ganzen Welt, aus Amerika, China, Japan, den nordischen Staaten, aus Südamerika. Ein anderer holt sich die Briefe raus, er liest sie, wenn er da Interesse daran hat, nimmt er den Brief mit nach Hause. Insofern können da schon wirklich schöne äh, Brieffreundschaften entstehen oder aber auch äh, Ehen sind dadurch schon zustande gekommen. Mir ist so mancher Brief äh, auch an die Eiche geschickt worden. Briefe habe ich sogar da. But there was one letter that caught his eye. Ich möchte Sie gerne kennenlernen. Sie sind mein Typ. Auch ich bin im Moment allein. Die Sendung von RTL hat mir gut gefallen. Renate Heinz. Eine Zeit später haben wir uns dann eben halt getroffen, ja. Wir sind nach wie vor verheiratet. Meine Frau, meine Wenigkeit, an dem Tag, wo wir geheiratet haben. Da steht das ganz groß, Hochzeit des Jahres. Ich finde schon, dass er was Magisches hat. Diese Ausstrahlung, diese, diese Ruhe, die man da hat, diese Ruhe, das kann ein Internet einem so nicht wiedergeben. Also ich kriege richtig die Gänse auf, wenn ich das so erzähle, weil das, das, das ist einmalig, das, das gibt es nirgends.
This is the story of a plant, mm. but not just any plant. It is the story of a plant that long, long ago once ruled the world. A plant that today is the very last of its kind. Mm. It's this plant behind me, Encephalatus woodii, E. woodii for short, and I've been looking after it for over 20 years. It was named for British botanist John Medley Wood, who in 1895 discovered it growing on a hillside on the coast of South Africa. A strange handsome plant Ooh. caught his eye and he carefully removed a small portion of it and had it shipped all the way to London. To here, Kew Gardens, where it's been for the last 117 years. But its history goes much, much further back. You see, Encephalatus woodii is what is known as a cycad, and cycads have been around for 300 million years. As the millennium rolled on, cycads flourished, providing shade for triceratops, a perch for pterodactyls, and a tasty snack for brontosauruses. At one point during the Jurassic, cycads made up 20% of all the plants on Earth and covered every corner of the globe. But, the good times couldn't last forever. The dinosaurs went extinct. Ice ages came and went. New modern plants like conifers and fruit trees started pushing cycads out. And the once proud population of E. woody eyes were reduced and reduced and reduced until there was possibly only one left, one single solitary E. woody eye growing quietly on a hillside. Which brings us right back to John Medley Wood. At the time, he had no way of knowing just how rare his discovery was. But expedition after expedition in search of more E. woodii have proved fruitless. You see, cycads are dioecious, meaning you need separate male and female plants to create a new one. And this one happens to be a male, a true lonely bachelor. If a female mate cannot be found, it really will be the last of its kind. To this day, researchers are still looking. After all, it's a big world and might just be a chance. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, he'll have me to keep him company. Little trees, they're a rear view mirror staple, protecting noses from offensive odors all over the world. But where do they come from? Over 60 years ago, a scientist by the name of Julius Simon had a chance encounter with a milkman that changed the course of the air freshener game forever. It was in Watertown, New York. A milkman was making the rounds when he stopped to speak to Julius, a German-Jewish chemist who fled the Nazis and studied alpine tree aromas in the forests of Canada. Said milkman began venting to Julius about the stench that spoiled milk left in his car, and thus the quest began to destroy bad car odors. Julius drew inspiration from the tree aromas he studied by infusing their oils onto paper. In 1954, he filed a patent for tree-shaped paper infused with odor-destroying air perfume. Julius then started producing the air fresheners out of an empty auto shop and sending samples to local gas stations. The little trees were a big hit, and Julius successfully created the first automotive air freshener. Though the look remains the same, the scents are forever changing. Now the Little Tree Company has over 60 cents and has sold over a billion little trees worldwide. In the northwest region of Cambodia, there's a site like none other, where trees rise from rooftops and roots snake their way through walls. This is Ta Prom, a 12th century Buddhist temple that's become one with the jungle. 